Hey guys, Don here from Novus Beer Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to show you a simple way to install Minecraft server onto your Raspberry Pi 4 using this script called Pinecraft. So let's get started. Now a buddy of mine named Robbie over at Category 5 TV, and I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description below, created this script that will easily install a Minecraft server onto any Raspberry Pi. It'll do all the scripting, downloading, and everything that you need just to get it all set up so you don't have to worry about it. And not only that, he has multiple options so you could install different types of servers, whether it's original Minecraft, Spigot, Papercraft, whatever you want. So this is the script we're actually gonna be using today. Now what I'm gonna be covering is the installation part, but if you want more tuned Tuning, performance guides and stuff like that be sure to check out his channel because he's got a lot more guides than I do on this and be sure to let him know that I sent you there it'll be really funny he's also the guy who actually created NEMS Linux and I reviewed that a couple of months ago which is the monitoring solution for your network on your Raspberry Pi 4 last time I reviewed his product I crashed his website so this time I'm gonna crash his comment section now also if you're interested in installing the Java version of Minecraft to play on your Raspberry Pi 4 my buddy Luke from my discord also has a channel called Raspberry Pi and more you might have seen it before. Uh, he's actually created a video on how to install the Java version of Minecraft onto your Raspberry Pi 4. So I'll leave a link for that as well. All right, so to jump into it, uh, we're gonna install the light version of Raspberry Pi OS. So let me go over to my imager. And I love the new imager 1.6. If you haven't seen the review for this, check it out. So first I'm gonna choose my operating system, jump over to other and go into my 32-bit uh, light OS. And before I do anything, I'm gonna hold Shift Control X and I'm gonna enable the advanced options. Here I'm gonna set the host name and I am actually gonna change this to Pinecraft and enable SSH. Those are the two things I really needed. So let me put a password here, Raspberry. And I don't need to configure a Wi Fi uh, local, I'll just leave that and skip first run wizard and save. Choose the storage, I have the 32 git. Okay, so if you're gonna do this, I would highly recommend using uh, SSD instead of a SD card because the amount of read and write that you're gonna do running a Minecraft server will destroy the SD card. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using an SD card because uh, it's easier to show you guys. So now I'm gonna hit write and it shouldn't be that long since it's light version. It's gonna download and write at the same time. I like this, that it downloads and write at the same time. All right, now that everything is done, I could just eject the SD card and it should have all my settings in with the local host and I mean the host name and also the uh, SSH is enabled. So I'm gonna pop this over to my Raspberry Pi and SSH into it. So give me a sec. Since I'm waiting for that to boot, this is the software that we're gonna be installing and I'll leave a link to the GitHub page down below. It has all his information if you wanna check out his YouTube channel, uh, Twitter account, but yes, uh, Minecraft server, Install for Raspberry Pi, Pine 4, and other SBCs. As long as it's Linux based, I mean Debian based, um, you should be able to get everything installed on there. And if you wanna go down, server versions that he has, which is Paper, Fabric, Spigot, uh, Cubrite, and Vanilla. So these are all the ones that you could choose from. And um, basically the hardware requirements is minimum of four gigs of RAM, which I highly, highly recommend. If you got anything lower, it's gonna be a struggle just to run Minecraft, like the blocks creation. You'll see how slow it runs without that uh, extra bit of RAM. And he did have level seeds in there. One of the things I did request for uh, is the Minecraft title screen. So he asked me, he's like, hey, what do you want in there? I was like, hey, can you throw in the Minecraft title screen word, world seed in there? And uh, yeah, I'll check it out in a bit. It also has automated overclocking. So once you pop in, it'll detect it and automatically overclock the Raspberry Pi for you just to run better. And that's about it. So it should have been booted by now. Let me check my um, KVM. And we'll see, HDMI switch, I believe it should be input two. Okay, there you go, whoa, it actually did it. Look, Pinecraft login, that's my host name. It gave me my IP address of 122. So I'm pretty good with this. Let's SSH into it. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the Pi KVM, I've done plenty of videos on it. I'll leave a link right here if you wanna check it out. But this allows me to console in into the Raspberry Pi before I even SSH. So let me pop over here, minimize this. Uh, SSH pi at 192, 168, 105.122. Yes, Raspberry SSH is working. The user account is working. 
and we are in all right let me see if i can make this a little bit bigger for you guys and the first thing i'm going to do with all raspberry pis is sudo app update just to make sure it's get, getting the latest repositories and if i do have anything that needs to be upgraded i will upgrade that as well oh, 24 packages sudo app upgrade yes we're going to let that sit through real quick and then we will be ready so I am going to copy this link right up here. Copy that. That's new. Blocking VS Code repo. Hmm. Wonder what that's all about. And that's coming from the official Raspberry Pi thing. I got to look that up later. Okay. Once this is done, I got to git clone that link that I just I got from GitHub, which is his Cat5TV Pinecraft. And uh, we'll see from here. All right. Git clone. Get clone git clone sudo app install git because it's the light version it doesn't have git so let's download that as a matter of fact i haven't done this in a while oh only using 73 megs of ram and i own i am only using about where's my 1.3 gigs that's a little high but that should be fine so let's go back into git clone pinecraft cd into pinecraft and he should have an install and all i have to do is that up oh, sudo install and things should start popping up because i'm missing the software dialogue you have the app get dialogue and then he's doing it does it for you uh, pinecraft 2.6 installer okay checking the de dependencies installing java you see this is all automated like i don't have to do anything and it'll just do everything on its own Okay, so here you have different versions. I highly recommend using paper because if you haven't used the papercraft before, it is a very, very fast uh, Minecraft server. And I highly recommend it. I use it for, I either use spigot or paper depending on the plugins that I want, but mostly paper because it's just so lightweight. And most of the time I play vanilla Minecraft anyway, so I don't really worry about uh, plugins. So paper, depending on what you wanna do, I'm just gonna do creative. You could do survival. Uh, username for the server. Now this one will have to be a user that you already have. In our case, it's going to be Pi. Okay, I accept the ULA. And in here, you could actually generate the seeds that you want. It could be random. It could be custom if you got a custom seed that you want. And a few of them that he already put in. And like I was saying, I do want to check out the Minecraft title screen since I requested that. Automatically load server on boot. Yes, sir. So, what this is, it's detected that it's a Raspberry Pi 4 because, like I said, it could work for Pinecraft and other uh, boards like this. RAM allocated, so it's going to do the Java swatch where it'll actually allocate a certain amount of RAM. Since I am using a 4 gigabyte board, it already knows that and it's allocating about 1.5 gigs to 2.4 gigs of RAM for it. It's also overclocking it to 1.9. The user, obviously, is Pi, and we're doing a Papercraft Creator version. Hit OK. It will overwrite everything because it's got to add the... Um, the overclocking stuff hit yes it downloads all the stuff for you and we are done hit okay and it gives me the ip address it does take a little bit for world regeneration but i do recommend rebooting it right after this because it's set up the overclocking but without the actual reboot to read the config.txt file the overclocking will not take effect until that happens so what i'm going to do is do htop and i could see that it's actually trying to process all the seeds and everything the minecraft server is running so oh i think it's probably finished with the seed what i'm going to do now is reboot oh sudo reboot give that a second let's pop over to my kvm and see if it's working on that now it does take a little bit because it is stopping a job and the job is the minecraft server so it will actually peacefully turn shut down your uh, minecraft server without a forceful reboot so something like this it helps a lot just to save the seeds and uh any issues that come up but yes it is rebooting and uh once it's done we're going to check on it to see if it got the overclock and how everything is running all right there we have it it rebooted and it just sits right here and I believe it's starting up. So let's check it out. I'm gonna go into my Minecraft game over here, Minecraft launcher, uh, hit play. Let's pop into multiplayer. Uh, do not show the screen again, proceed, add a server. And I, I will call this Minecraft server 
IP address, which I know, 192.168.105.122. Done. And there we go. Join server. There we have it, guys. It actually runs really, really smooth. Like even the seed generation and everything. So I haven't played Minecraft in a very long time. Well, I play with my son, but we don't. We only do create. I mean, we only do uh, survival. So I think OP Novas is it OP OP Nova Spirit Tech OP Nova Spirit Tech. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a problem because I have, uh, I, I don't remember the commands. So, let's go manually to that location. So, where do I need to go? XYZ, 63.4, so it's 61.48. Y is 75, so Y is, it's actually very, very close. It should be like right here. Five and 68 is the last one. So let's go over to 68. As you can see that the world generation is Wait, not negative. Oh yeah, negative. Negative 68. Nope, not this way. Not this way. So let's get to negative 68 first. And it actually seems to be performing pretty well, even though it's doing the world generation on my Raspberry Pi 4. So 68 should be like right here. And X should be 60. So I'm going to go this way a little bit. So it's technically where I started. I don't see water. I know it has a water thing. Okay, maybe the seed is changed because this is a different version that I'm loading it from. I might have to load an old version because normally I don't think the newer, ver the older version have a town. I mean, the older version doesn't have a town. So definitely because I know that the Minecraft intro screen has water. Anyway, you get the idea. Everything seems to be running pretty good. And the world generation seems to be not having a, much of a problem. Obviously, I can't see too far, but it pops up right away and gives me all the data that I need. It runs really well on the Raspberry Pi 4 as a Minecraft server. Honestly, I don't know how many players you could throw in there uh, before it starts overloading. But again, it works and it's super easy to install. That is it for me, guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Be sure to give some love to Robbie over at Category 5 TV for creating the script and also checking out Luke from Raspberry Pi and more to check out how to install the game actually on your Raspberry Pi 4. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.